Okay, let's look at right now on the lighting. And inside the lighting, you will notice by default, we have an environment light and we have a sunlight. So environment light, think about this, it's overall the light, like ambient light. And sunlight, it's a directional light with a far, far away object, so it will spread around properly and um, how it's create this shadow. So let's look first on Envire Light. Right here you will notice the mode is rendered currently it's global illumination. This is one of the better. We can go down to ambient occlusion when it will be um, some simulating. It's faster render but the different mainly from them with the global illumination we have a color that will reflect and lighting up other areas. With the ambient occlusion you want to have this effect. So it is a um, nice render, but global illumination is more accurate, but it's also take a longer time to render as well. Okay, next, let's look on a sunlight. Okay, I'm sorry, environment light. Right here, we have a string to the surface. So you can enable and see how much effect will apply right here. You can see it start way over exposure. So, but you can also increase or decrease some shadows depend what area you want to produce. Um, in some cases, if you're using masking on the light, you can create, uh, reduce and create harder shadows by reducing string on the surface and apply only directional. Um, color on the surface, string in the atmospheres overall, and color in atmosphere. So, for example, again, it will just pop up. And right here, you can see an atmosphere we highlighting higher, included haze. But because we'll keep a string on the surface down, our surfaces look this way. So overall, it is um, which part and how much it will highlight. Okay, let's go next to the sunlight. In a sunlight, you'll notice we'll have it um, properties as enable, which is can remove, kind of enable, disable light. One thing you notice as soon when we disable sunlight, it's no light. Even environment light which is kind of stay separately, but it is require some sunlight be enabled. Okay, we have a light surface enabled. So right here, instead atmospheres of this. And of course we have light atmospheres or just the surfaces. The heading of the sun and right here in this icon, you can see right here. So we can say where's the sun position. Cameras as always will point to the zero. So we can apply relative to the camera looking okay we have it elevation 25 degrees um, and we can bring it down and up about 25 is what they call about golden hour when it's the best shadows producing so if you want to zen it you probably want to go to 90 it will be straight up sun and of course we can go down most of the settings is if you want to simulate or have it set extensions when for example we was filming um, I take the settings of the daytime when we did it time step you can go inside the um, Google Maps or other ones and you can find precisely position for the Sun so you can just put values inside and it will simulate very well the Sun overall positioning we also have a coloring of the Sun by default it said but you can always go and modify creating some other one coloring for your sun or overall lighting it's well produced okay so let's go ahead right here and just set back okay string and it's again it's straightforward we can increase amount of the sunlight over power or creating just barely lighting up at all Maybe somewhere around right here Okay, we also have it shadows, and this is kind of nice because we have it a normal shadows on the surface. We can produce it straightforward. The one thing I want to point: do soft shadows. If you do landscapes, uh, massive landscapes, you probably want to increase because what's happening: the soft shadows, its edges of those shadows will produce and calculate um, a little bit nicer and smoother. You can see when in preview, it's already kind of softened them out, produce this. Um, nice natural effect however this is, does take a little bit longer to um, calculate soft shadows diameters it's uh, how far will go from the center darker sampling how many will have it and jitters of the lines 
obviously glow in atmosphere. If you have it sunlight passing through atmosphere, it can work with the haze interactions. Specular highlights, as well we have a sun disk. So right here, if we bring the sun kind of up front of the camera, and let's bring it down. So right here, you can see the our sun. This is a visible disk, so you can create a large visible disk or not. The couple things I find out sometimes, if you have a different object, the sun disk may go through the object so you can still see the sun. In this case, you probably won't disable visible disk from, so it will have an effect, but you won't see the sun itself. Okay, let's go look on another light source and we look on the environment light and notice you can have it, actually let me delete this one, you can have it two sunlights. So if you want and you decide to create planet with two, three, four, ten sunlights, you can add and see how the lighting will look in this case. Sometimes additional sunlight may be nice to play if you have a sunset with very hard shadows and you want them to move out, you can create another global sunlight, uh, put an opposite side and just take down power. So just move a little bit and bring details. Okay, we also have it light sources. So in this case, it's just, um, okay, Omnit light source. Let's go to a um, little bit zoom out. Okay. On this case, you can create the light source uh, repositioning on the place where you want it. And apply the center, radius, colors. So it's overall think about this as omnit light that producing and a distance. So next, you also have it spotlight, which is probably you will lose, uh, use more than other ones. In this case, okay, let me go up, bring a little bit closer. Get to spotlight. And in this case, um, you probably will use more when you're creating or try to illuminate maybe in some internal, some other areas. So I can right here, can go and select it. And normally on spotlight, you will have it shape, power, fallout, between edges, out of angle, enter. So they're all general standard settings. As well, you have additional um, effects, the shadows and uh, glowing at atmosphere. So similar to what we have before to sunlight, only it's more isolated to directional to going in one way. As well, your global settings, your positions that you can copy and paste from other places, color, string, of the light it's produced and as well you have maximum distance so for example if i set this to 500 the maximum distance it will dissipating right here so it's 500 it's where approximate lights will cover up so let me go ahead take the string a little bit down so right here you can see it's going and it dissipating on a 500 so we can go over even set 50 meters so it will cover on here so it's maximum distance, beam, same how I said before, it is applied. Mostly what you want to look, it is a shape and a fallout power. For example, you can reduce this area of fallout or you make a little bit smoother kind of integration. The one thing also, you can notice if your slider doesn't work, in many cases, you can actually go and type in values. They may work or give you some unpredictable um, effect. It's why the slider is locked, so you can have it in safe zone. But overall, you can go in many of the sliders and just type value that it's not even allowed by the slider itself. Okay, so overall, this is light sources. And uh, you will notice when I work, for example, with some models like cities or other ones inside the Terrazin, I use it quite a bit of the spotlights and uh, light sources. So we'll use it quite a bit of them to place it to create these specific lighting situations.